Hello everyone, Justin here, and welcome to the second installment in my uh, ongoing series of Game of Thrones. As you may know by watching my channel previously, I am currently making my way through the entire series for the first time in preparation for the release of the eighth and final season coming out next year. And I just finished season two, and I'm here to give my thoughts on that right now. Uh, the first thing I can say is a lot better than the first season. A lot better than the first season. The first season had thing there were there were there were things I didn't like about it and there were things I liked about it. I like I liked a lot of the characters. I liked a lot of the ideas and themes explored. Uh, I liked the writing. I thought the writing was very clever. But I didn't like how it focused on certain things that I personally didn't feel were important. I didn't like how the first half of the season really didn't feel like it was going anywhere and it didn't start like it didn't start it didn't start to feel like the series was going anywhere until the uh, second half of the season. Um, so there I, I loved Sean Bean's character um, but I feel like he was a little underused. Uh, so there were things I really liked about the first season and there were things I didn't like about the first season and my first thoughts having just finished season two is so much better <laughs> than the first season. Season two of Game of Thrones is really, really, really good. Everything is better. The, the story is better, the writing is better, the acting is better, the characters feel more developed and fleshed out now, this world feels more developed and fleshed out now. Everything feels like a lot more time and thought was put into it than the first season. And again, I'm not saying I didn't like the first season. I'm just saying like everything that was good about the first season, this new second season just does so much better. And a lot of the things I didn't like about the first season are not present in the second season, or at least not present very much. This second season, there are some low points in this second season where it drags a little bit, but overall, there is not a significant part of this season that feels like it's not going anywhere like there were with the first season. Like, you f like you feel from the beginning of season two like this is what season one was building up to. You really do feel like this is... This is the story of the series. This is the main story of the series. And season one was just a prologue. Season one was just a setup to get to the main story of the series. And the, uh, and if you watched my season one review, I, I said that I hoped that's what it was going to be. I hoped that because season one just felt like a setup, I hope that season two actually pays off that setup and it doesn't turn into one of those TV shows that just always feels like it's building up to something so they can keep it going and keep it going, and then it, that big thing that it's building up to never happens or or happens too late. Um, and I was really hoping that this wouldn't be one of those shows that season two would give us what season one felt like it was building up to, and I knew it probably would because unlike most TV shows, this is based on a series of books, and there are a limited number of books, so they have to get to the important stuff pretty soon. But yeah, I was just so, so pleased with season two, simply because it did feel like things were starting to happen. It did feel like, okay, this is the story of the series. This is where things were going in, in season one. I feel like the sto I feel like the series has started now. I feel like season one was just the series trying to start, like getting ready to start. And then season two, it's, it's, we're in it now. Things are happening. We're in it now. Everyone is, every character that didn't really know what they wanted to do the first season and was just trying to figure things out, not really doing anything, is now full-fledged maximum overdrive. Let's get this done. There's a million different people claiming that they have the right to this throne and there's a million different armies all attacking each other. There's battles and wars going on over here. There's wars going on over here and they're all connected into this one bigger war 
all just for this throne. There's a million different people who claim that the throne is their birthright and they're the one that deserve, that, that deserves it. And the reasons they do have are good reasons. The reasons why each individual party feels like they deserve the throne are good reasons. It really helps with the drama of the series because if it was just some some idiot wanting the throne and feeling like it was his birthright simply because he wanted power, that wouldn't be that interesting. But, you know, who gets the throne? Who is Who has the right to the throne does vary based on how you interpret things. And, of course, each party is going to interpret that differently for their own personal gain. And it really, really helps with the drama of the series. Plus, I love how characters that... A lot of characters that weren't really that well developed and didn't really feel like they were going anywhere and kind of felt useless are now starting to get a lot more attention and get a lot more developed. The best example of this is um, Sansa, Princess Sansa Stark. Princess? Is she technically a princess? I don't know. But uh, Sansa Stark, she, in the first season, she was like, she felt very superfluous. She felt like she did not need to be there. What was her point in the story? She's just there to be a pretty face and nothing else. But in this season, you know, she actually has her own story and conflict and drama and goals and emotions. And you find out more about who she is as a person. And this uninteresting block of wood um, that we had the first season is now uh, a character in her own right. And that's just one example of several characters who weren't that interesting and weren't really that, they didn't feel like they were very important in the first season, um, getting more development and more attention and more more time in this series. Uh, this this in, in this season, this season increases the amount of characters very much as well. There are a lot more characters this season, and the show does a very good job of balancing all of that because this show has a million different things going on. This show does not follow one single storyline. This show follows a million different storylines that are all connected in a, in a very complicated way. And the show balances all those different things very well. Uh, there are some unfortunate uh, byproducts of that. For example, there are entire episodes where you go entire episodes sometimes without seeing major characters. There's one episode you go the entire episode without seeing Jon Snow uh, and, uh, and the, the Night's Watch. There's one episode where you go the entire time without seeing Rob Stark or any of the people or Tywin Lannister or any of those people. So there are some unfortunate byproducts of having to juggle so many different storylines and so many different characters. But the, but the fact that they do it as well as they do is really, really, really impressive. And, uh, and I, another thing I really like about this is that it's clear it's one specific party's vision. It doesn't feel like there's a million different hats uh, and a million different suits all trying to put their own thing into this. It feels like it's one single vision. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that most of the episodes are written by the the two guys who are the executive producers of the show. Most of the episodes are written by those two guys, and most of the episodes are directed by this one guy. I think his, his name is Alan Taylor. Not all the episodes are written and directed by this combination of people, but most of them are. And because most of the episodes have the same writers and the same director, the show really feels like it's one vision. Um, one of the problems with The Walking Dead, and one of the main reasons why I stopped watching The Walking Dead is because it felt like uh, one of the reasons. There were several reasons why I stopped watching The Walking Dead. Um, it felt like they were trying to do too many things. It felt like there were just too many ideas of what the show was supposed to be all being put into there but this feels like one vision this feels like a small group of people got together figured out exactly what the show was going to be what the style and the tone was going to be and everything and they're sticking with that uh and it helps that they have books to go off of still i think the same logic applies that 
the fact that most of the episodes have the same writers and the same director helps the entire show feel like it's one vision and one creative presence. And I, that's something that's missing in a lot of mainstream TV shows nowadays. So yeah, before I start getting into uh, spoilers and uh, I'm not going to go too much into specific story elements uh, on this um, simply because there really isn't a lot of specific story things uh, I want to talk about. Ooh, I, I did forget um, Tyrion Lannister, Peter Dinklage's character, Tyrion Lannister. Uh, he's my favorite character in the show. Uh, I don't know this for certain, but I feel like, I, I don't know, I just feel like he's a lot of people's favorite character. I don't know that for sure. I haven't talked to any other Game of, Thron Game of Thrones fans, so I don't know. Um, but he's my favorite character in the series. Um, he's like the perfect combination of doesn't give a crap, insults anyone he feels like, um, not afraid to call someone out, sleeps with prostitutes because he doesn't want to form personal atta attachments. He's the perfect combination of a-hole and when he has responsibilities, he gets them done. When he is faced with a decision that requires him to do the ethical thing, he will do it. He basically is an a-hole when it only affects him. But when it starts affecting other people, he's, he s stops being an a-hole and he mans up. And that's one of the things that makes him such an interesting character. I mean, the first few episodes of season one, you kind of don't like him at all. He's just a complete and total a-hole. All he does is sleep with prostitutes and call his own family member idiots all the time. He seems like a complete jerk. Um, and then in this season, you know, he's, he becomes a very high ranking official in the King's court and he seems to seriously, very seriously take his job. And he seriously seems invested in helping to run this kingdom as well as he can. It's really, really interesting. Um, also there is a very significant personal attachment that he does uh, get into that based on who he was in the first season and what you saw of him in the first season, you would never expect him to do. So he is the most interesting character in the show for me. The second most interesting character in the show for me was Sean Bean's character, but he's gone now. I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing where Peter Dinklage's character uh, goes from here because he's just a really interesting character and they're doing a lot of really awesome things with it. Oh my goodness, this show has some of the best written dialogue in any show I have seen, and I've seen a lot of different TV shows. Um, this has some of the best written dialogue I've ever seen. Um, the just The writers are able to come up with such clever ways of wording things and clever ways of using dialogue to motivate the story. Not just, a lot of TV shows make the mistake of having dialogue just because they need to have characters talking to fill the runtime. So it's not dialogue, it's just characters talking. Uh, but this show comes up with incredibly clever and unique ways to use dialogue to tell the story, to propel the story forward. Uh, an example is there's a scene where uh, two characters are uh, traveling and some uh, not so friendly guys come upon them and uh, very threatening people. And they say, you know, who are you? Who are you? Blah, 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 blah. And the two of them, of course, lie about who they are. Um, and uh, the, the, the bad guys are like, I know you, you're so-and-so. And, -so. and and they're like, no, no, we're not. We're, we're not so-and-so. I'm sorry to disappoint you, but, but we're not so-and-so, so-and-so. And one of the bad guys is like, okay, I'm going to count to three. And at the end of three, I want you both at the same time to say his name. <laughs> and, and of course, they can't do it. <laughs> that is so clever. Like, I would have never have thought of that. A lot of writers would have never have thought of that. That is really, really clever. Uh, this show has some of the cleverest dialogue I have ever heard 
in a TV show. And it's, it, it, it's one of the reasons why I love watching this show. It's just the brilliant dialogue. This next little bit is, uh, this last little bit is spoilery, so if you have not seen the show, stop now. Um, one thing, uh, because during this season, the war, this like big war is finally starting, there's a lot of battles. But even though I love well-written dialogue and interesting dramatic stories, just as much as the next guy. I also like a good battle scene when I see one. <laughs> um, and there's and throughout this entire season, it gets kind of frustrating because the battles keep happening. The battles keep happening off screen, like they don't show them. All the soldiers will be lined up, and they'll be like, "Charge!" And they all start running, and then it just fades to black, and it fades back in, and the battle's over. And it's like, "Come on, you're not even going to show us the battle." And I get it. Battle scenes are expensive to do, and require a lot of time and planning that they probably don't have. So, I mean, I get it, but it's so frustrating throughout most of this season because the battles keep happening off screen. They just imply that they happened, but they don't actually show them happening. That is until uh, the next to last episode of the season. That particular episode is pretty much entirely one gigantic battle scene, and it's amazing. <laughs> like, they were, it's like they were saving up all the time, money, resources, and effort they were going to put into a battle scene in general. They were saving it for this one, because, oh my goodness, this battle scene is amazing. And everything, not just from the choreography and the the way the actual mechanics of the battle are planned out, but also in terms of the lighting, the mood, the cinematography, the atmosphere, the, uh, the editing, the, the, the music, just the way everything feels, not just the way it looks, but the way it feels. There's such a rich atmosphere to this battle scene. Um, and it's, it's just really, really, really well done. And uh, another surprising thing about this episode is that this particular episode was written by George R. R. Martin himself. Uh, he's the, the author of the books, uh, and he himself wrote this episode. It does cause some problems in that some of the dialogue in this episode doesn't really fit with the style of dialogue that's in the rest of the series because it's clearly a different writer. But, uh, but... Who knew that a novelist, someone who usually only writes for the page, could write a script that shows a battle visually so well? I mean, like, George R. R. Martin may... I don't know what he's done. I'm not a George R. R. Martin expert. He may have written scripts for film and TV before, and I just don't know about it. I think he should get into it. I mean, like, the way this the way this script visually crafts the story of this battle, it's not just a, a bunch of guys running at each other with swords. It, there's, there, there are things happening. There's story happening within this battle, and most of it is done visually. And for a novelist to write a visual story so well is really really impressive um I, I i it's just a great battle scene it's a very well very well done episode in general everything from the writing to the the cinematography and the mood and just, and the editing and the pacing of it all it's just a fantastic episode and then that is that's the second to last episode of the season the final episode of the season is um it's it's a longer one. It's over an hour, but they do do a lot of really awesome and clever things in it. At the end of the final episode, the final scene of the final episode of this season, you finally see the White Walkers. They've been building up the White Walkers the entire series so far, and you finally see them. In the, and yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> it's really awesome. Uh, they're not exactly what I thought they were going to be. Uh, now, again, we only got this one short scene, and maybe they're going to, we're going to find out more about them uh, later. We're 
probably going to find out more about them later. They're building them up like they're going to be a big thing. But um, I, they were a little, they're different than what I expected. I expected some sort of like fantastical creature. The way they talk about the White Walkers, I was under the impression that the White Walkers were some sort of made-up fantastical creature and that these people, all these dead bodies that rise up and attack people, basically zombies, were something different. And that was like a new thing. But no, apparently, according to this scene where we finally see the White Walkers, those dead bodies that keep coming back to life every time someone dies and attacking people, those are the White Walkers. So the White Walkers are basically just zombies. That was a little disappointing because, I mean, we've seen zombies in so many things so far. It is interesting to see zombies in a fantasy setting, um, but still, like, really? Zombies? Like, everybody's doing zombies now. Like, it's not clever or unique. However, there is a moment in this scene where uh, John, John Bradley's character is hiding behind a rock and the one particular White Walker who seems to be leading the whole pack, they have a leader, looks at him and like, you can see he's like thinking in his head, am, am I going to waste my time killing this guy? No, I'm not. And he just moves on. So they show one of the White Walkers thinking. The fact that they show one of them thinking and the fact that they have a leader in general does heavily suggest that they're not the typical zombies, that they do have some intelligence to them. They do have some sort of awareness to them. And that could be interesting. So I'm hoping, as we find out more about them in later seasons, I'm hoping that they're not just zombies and that they actually are something unique and different. Because everything else in this show, uh, and this is, I think, a fundamental problem with the White Walkers, is everything else in this show feels very, very grounded in reality. Um, there's very little... Usually when you think of fantasy, you think of magic and wizards and everything. There's very little of that in Game of Thrones. Almost everything in Game of Thrones is as grounded in reality as it possibly can be. Like, if this world were to actually exist, this is how it would be. They try to make it very realistic and very grounded in reality. So when you have something as fantastical as these White Walkers appear here and there uh, from time to time, they do kind of, not kind of, really, they do really feel out of place because you have this very fantastical element in an otherwise gritty realistic show and it, it it does conflict a little bit uh again we've only gotten one scene where we've seen them and uh just little bits of information in other episodes and that's all we have to go on so when they're explored more and shown more in later seasons you know my thoughts may change but right now the, the white walkers just feel out of place with the show they don't feel like they belong in this world and I'm hoping they can do something in later seasons that make them feel like they belong in this world and fix the problem of how out of place they feel. Well, that's my review for Game of Thrones Season 2. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I'm currently editing a new Multi Prometheus 1 episode, so you can expect that very soon. Uh, it's a really fun one that I had a lot of fun writing. And yeah, I uh, hope you guys enjoy that. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will see you next time. Bye.